Welcome back to the latest edition of Conference Chatter TV. After the second week of action in college football and in the Big 12, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of every team in the conference except for Kansas, and I'll explain why here in a second. Thanks for checking out the latest episode, guys, and sticking with me here. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I'm the KUSports.com Big 12 blogger. I pick every game in the Big 12, and after week two, I was 11-1, and one, same as week one, and same thing as week one again. The only game I missed was Kansas. In week one, I thought they'd win, and they lost to North Dakota State. In week two, I didn't think they'd have any chance of beating Georgia Tech, quite frankly, after that performance, and they go ahead and beat the number 15 team in the nation. So Kansas, a very unpredictable team so far in the 2010 season, and those are my only two losses. I'm 22-2 and two on the year. So what can you say about this game, though? Kansas, certainly the, the biggest surprise of the day, 28-25 to 25 victory over Georgia Tech in Lawrence. Uh, Jordan Webb was just spectacular. The quarterback, 18 of 29, 179 yards, three touchdowns. He was just you know, he was just really good. He probably could have had better numbers. I mean, Damon Patterson had a drop. Bradley McDougal had a drop that I can think of off the top of my head. And, uh, you know, could have had better numbers than that. And as is, he was pretty darn good. He's clearly earned that starting role at quarterback over Kale Pick, who was just used in some kind of wildcat type of formations here and there. Um, you know, you have to think after this performance, though, that KU is better suited with Jordan Webb playing every snap at quarterback for the Jayhawks. Uh, one nitpick that I did have with, with Jordan Webb was he did got, you know, he threw that interception, and he did get sacked four times. He's, you know, displayed an ability to, to really have a strong arm and, and uh, find the receivers uh, that are open downfield, but occasionally he has hung on to the ball too long, and that's something that will come with time as the season progresses. He's got to get rid of the ball a lot faster. Four sacks won't get it done in conference play. But, I mean, great progress by Jordan Webb. I mean, this was just a, a heck of a performance. And speaking of great performances for KU, how about James Sims, the true freshman uh, from the Dallas area? 17 rushes, 101 yards, and a touchdown. That's almost six yards per rush. I think James Sims has cemented his his place as as a guy who's get who, who will... Receives several carries per game for, for KU. He's clearly past Deshaun Sands right now. And it's going to be Sims and Quigley getting the majority and the bulk of the carries for KU. James Sims is a talented, talented guy. I mean, he's a true freshman. He was running with a purpose today. And, you know, if he could do this against a Georgia Tech defense, I like his chances about having a pretty good year for KU. And potentially a good career if he keeps to it like that. Another guy I was impressed with with the... Uh, with KU, who just looked completely different on offense, was Damon Patterson. Seven receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown. How about that screen pass that he scored on on the right side? Made just a dazzling move in the secondary. Spun around. Uh, I think he eluded three or four defenders and um, kept his feet amazingly. I, I thought for sure that he was going to be tackled on that play where he caught a 32-yard touchdown pass, took a screen pass, and, and took it to the house. I actually talked to Patterson and did a story on him before the year. And, you know, this was a guy that's very confident. He said he wants to make people miss and he wants to embarrass defenders. And 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 that was before the season. And that's what he did against the defending ACC champions in Georgia Tech. It was very impressive. He had a really nice game. And, you know, this is a guy who a lot of people are very high on and who a lot of people uh, just see as just a sheer burner. And, and you saw that. I mean... The, guy can, the guy's got wheels, that's for sure, and he displayed it against Georgia Tech. A very nice performance. And, you know, KU just had it working. They had it working on all, on all, all, in all phases, pretty much. I mean, the defense held Josh Nesbitt to 15 carries for 33 yards. I mean, that's in, incredible. You know, you, you look at the, at the Yellow Jackets triple option attack. Nesbitt's getting a whole lot more than 33 yards, typically, against defenses he goes up against. Just a very good performance uh, by the Jayhawks. Uh, I, I feel, though, that this team is just incredibly unpredictable. You know, you look at them. Next week, they go on the road to Southern Miss. That's a, you know, it's a tough road game, Friday night game. I don't know who I'm going to pick. Um, I feel like I shouldn't analyze it too too much, though, because, 
KU is is very unpredictable at this point. But you got to give credit to Turner Gill and his staff. That's got to be one of the most drastic one week adjustments that I've ever seen uh, in college football. I mean, the depths to which KU is playing and how bad they looked in week one versus how good they looked in week two. I mean, that's a very quick turnaround. And credit to Turner Gill and his staff. Let's take a look at some other games. All the rest of them I, I picked correctly. Oklahoma 47, Florida State 17. The Sooners just drubbed the Seminoles there in Norman, extending the nation's longest winning streak there. Landry Jones, incredible, 30 of 40. This is what I wanted to see from him. I talked about this, you know, at the beginning of, of uh, this video when I was making predictions, and I wanted to see something from Landry Jones. And all I did was go 30 of 40 for 380 yards and four touchdowns, no interceptions. He looked in midseason form uh, or better, and, and that was just great. You know, he, he played very well opposite Christian Ponder, the Florida State quarterback, only 113 passing yards, two interceptions, and the FSU quarterback sacked four times. So credit that Oklahoma defense for playing exceptional as well. Nebraska 38, Idaho 17. The Huskers just really dominant, averaging eight yards per rush. They had 360 rushing yards on the day. This was just uh, a great performance by Nebraska. Idaho had six turnovers. And of those six turnovers, five of them were interceptions, and two of those got returned for touchdowns. So the, the black shirts in full effect, uh, you know, tonight for Nebraska. They had seven sacks as well. I mean, this is a defense that's just incredible. It's one of the best in the country. I'd probably say it's the best in the Big 12 right now. There's no question about it. One nitpick I had for Nebraska, though, they did have four turnovers. They had three lost fumbles. That's something that, again, will will uh, will you would think improve as the season progresses. Next, we had Iowa 35, Iowa State 7. For the second straight year, ball security was that was certainly the difference, you know, from the from the uh, quarterback's perspective, was the difference in this game. Austin Arnaud for, for uh, excuse me, for Iowa State, 20 of 44, only completed 45.5% of his passes, 197 yards. He did have a touchdown, but he had three interceptions, and that's what doomed him last year against Iowa. Whereas Ricky Stanzi, the quarterback for Iowa, 11 of 18, that's over 60% completion percentage, 204 yards, three total touchdowns, zero interceptions. So, you know, you look at the Hawkeyes, no turnovers, and then you look at the Cyclones, three turnovers. There, there's your game right there. Oklahoma State, 41, Troy, 38. Kendall Hunter, once again, he just blitzed Troy two years ago. And... You know, he did it again. 28 rushes, 157 yards, two touchdowns. This just in, this guy is is pretty darn good. This is the second straight week where Ken Kendall Hunter has displayed that he is completely over that injury of last year, and he's looking like he did two years ago when he led the Big 12 in rushing. rest of the games were kind of obvious here. Um, Kansas State, 48. Missouri State, 24. California, 52. Colorado, 7. The Buffs just looked atrocious. I didn't think they'd get blown out that bad on the road, but you know, Colorado proving that they still have quite a ways to go until they compete on a on a weekly basis. Baylor 34, Buffalo 6, Texas 34, Wyoming 7, Missouri 50, McNeese State 6, Texas Tech 52, New Mexico 17, and Texas A&M 48, Louisiana Tech 16. So, picked all those games right except Kansas. I cannot get the Jayhawks right, so I will try to do that next week. I quite honestly have no idea who I will pick in the in, in the Jayhawks game again at Southern Miss on Friday night, but it should be a fun one there on ESPN nationally televised game. Well, that should do it. Uh, two two weeks uh, are in the books here at Conference Chatter TV, and we are sitting at twenty two and two on the season. So if I could just improve my KU picks, I think we'll be sitting pretty here for the rest of the year. Thanks for checking out the latest edition, guys. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I am out. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks a lot.